You're listening to the Homeboys Podcast, recorded in our Indiana office and with combined 40 years of experience. Here's your hosts, Clint and Scott. What's going on, real estate investors? I'm Clint Weatherill, and you're with the Homeboys. We thank you for joining us. We've got a very exciting topic today. We're talking about foreclosures. Are there going to be any? When are they going to pick back up? What's next? Uh, All that and more with a lot of your insight today, my co-host, Mr. Scott Adams. How are you, my brother? Good, man. Yeah. uh, We're having a fun day today. We're kind of taking care of lots of odds and ends around the office and joking uh, around. Just got done firing off some Nerf guns. (laughs) She got my daughter for her, for her birthday. She's finally old enough that I can start buying (laughs) weapons for her at age five. (laughs) It's funny because last night my wife had uh, some people from our church over at our house. So when that happens, you just got to get the kids out. So we came in here, we got Fazoli's. And, you know, watch some Mickey Mouse. And then we had a Nerf gun war around our office. So fun. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. But I actually got a, there's a couple of welts on my two-year-old. Oh, yeah. At the, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm like, oh, gosh, my wife is yes not going to be happy when I get home. But yeah, I remember uh, when my kids. They went down. So <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. My kids were a little younger, and, and I posted the picture, and I shouldn't have, where I said conflict resolution while mom is out of town. Mandy was out of town. It was me and my two girls. We were all holding Nerf guns, you know. Mom didn't awesome. like that idea. Well, we it's didn't so have fun. that whenever we were kids. No. You no, know, it's just, they're incredible. Yeah. And they really come out, too. I mean, they, I mean it's <laughs> they pretty do. pretty potent. But yeah. uh, but anyhow, well, real quick, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on LinkedIn. Um, hit subscribe on YouTube. We're going to continue to churn out quality content about sound real estate investing. Again, we're happy to be here with you today. And I'm not, I'm going to, you know, I'll add some color to this, but I'm going to kind of turn this over to you most, mostly because, you know, I feel like you're kind of the acquisitions expert now. I've kind of, I've, I know a lot about acquisitions, but I've taken a very, very big backseat in acquisitions for over a decade. And it's kind of been your world Um, but you know, this is a topic that I think is very important because there's lots of real estate investors out there thinking, you know, when are, when are we going to see the next wave of foreclosures hit the market? You and I used to really dominate the local foreclosure market, you know, around here. And now there's just not that many, there's not that many out there. I'll give a quick, for example, you know, and whenever I first got into real estate, I stayed in the HUD foreclosure world for the most part. And whenever they'd go from owner occupant into investor status on Mondays, I would spend the next three or four hours combing through several hundred properties just in Marion County um, and Johnson and Hendricks counties. Okay. Um, And now just, you know, a month back, there were 23 HUD foreclosures in the entire state of Indiana. And I'm talking about hundreds that were in investor status, not the owner occupant status, just in three counties, right? Hundreds, and now you know there's right. you know a handful in the entire state. So anyhow, and to I'm clarify, gonna... you're not talking about in 2008. You're talking about after the economy recovered. Mm-hmm. It was like that Correct. for years, for many years. Yeah. But anyhow, so why don't you kind of touch on? Where, you know, expand on that a little bit. Where are we at today and why are we where we are? Yeah, it's an interesting time. You know, um, if you're looking to acquire rental properties at below market prices, you're in for a tough couple of years ahead. You know, um, it's going to be very difficult um, there's not going to be a lot of foreclosures for a long time. And, and the, the, there's a real simple reason why, which is in an appreciating market, houses do not get foreclosed on. And you think, well, why not? Well, because it's as simple as if you're behind on your mortgage and it's been in an appreciating market, you now owe less than the house is worth. So you and or the bank can simply stick a sign in the yard before they foreclose on you and sell it and everybody walks away happy and whole. I can't believe that, you know, it, is, it just teaches you to always be listening and trying to learn. But you, t- you said this in a meeting a few days ago. Right. 
um, here in the office. And I was like, holy crap. You're right. Right. Like, we're not going to see this influx because why would, why would they happen? Yeah. You know, with the way the markets went. Right. Like, I can't believe that I didn't think of that. And right. I, I, Am I just that stupid? I mean, no, that's uh, you know, normal. Like, or is our, our, our other experienced investors like me, you know, are they going to hear this and be like, holy crap? You yes, know? they're all going to be. Like, I, all, I couldn't yeah. believe it when you said it. I'm like, yeah. they're not. Mar know? Markets, real estate markets are very complex. There's a lot of different factors that pull on them. And a lot of investors locally will be surprised by it because they've never experienced this. You know, people in California understood this. You know, when, when things were appreciating really quickly out there, there weren't foreclosures in San, San Francisco, as an mm -hmm. example, for like 10 years. There just weren't foreclosures. Right. Everything appreciated faster than you could, you could lean on it. Mm -hmm. No one was underwater on their properties. No one was. If you lose your job, you just sold your house and got a bunch of money in your pocket. You know? <laughs> just used it as a bank. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a common thing. Because we don't appreciate at these levels normally. It's, we're appreciating at an unsustainable rate, you know, a, as things stand. It's just an unsustainable rate. And so not only do we have some real interesting things happening in the social aspect of foreclosures, which is judges are very hesitant to foreclose. They don't want to make it on the news mm -hmm. as uh, banks are hesitant to foreclose because they've gotten a lot of stimulus money. And they don't want to be the bad guy right. again. So there's a lot of um, emotional reasons why everyone is hesitant to foreclose in the first place. And in the second part, there's no reason to. because um, So we work with a local uh, bank, uh, well, regional uh, bank, and handle all of their foreclosure work. Mm -hmm. um, it's a relationship you actually brought uh, with you. Love working with together. them. They're Great amazing. people. Well-run companies just honored to work with them. Yeah. I'm, they're who I send my dad to and mm -hmm. my mom to, and they're just a great company. Well, if they've got a client who's not paying their mortgage, their first call isn't to their lawyer to file foreclosure paperwork. It's to call that person and to call us and to try to put us together with them so that we can help solve that. So it doesn't turn into a foreclosure foreclosure. And guess what? Our answer has been every time for the last two years when someone's landed in our lap that they've brought us together with, we can just sell it for you and you'll make some money and the bank will get paid off and everyone wins. You know, it's that simple. So there's just not going to be a lot of foreclosures. And th there's a lot of investors out there who buy only foreclosures and um, distressed properties. And so those are going to be difficult for a lot of folks to come by. We have a lot of different acquisitions means, and we're going to be relying heavily on all of them outside of the bank owned properties. So if you were a bank owned buyer or you are a buyer that isn't looking to just easily do this and have a group, you know, wrap it in a bow like we do. And, and you want to be a value investor it's going to be a difficult few years for you. Even if the economy were to, were to go backwards, um, we still would see at least another year of delay before that would affect and run into the foreclosure. I'll put some interesting perspective on this. So, and I know you have these also. I don't know what your parameters are, but I've got auto searches set up in the MLS for bank-owned and distressed property that hit our local MLS right. that kick out emails to me as soon as the property hits the market. Right. Um, they've been set up. These auto searches have been set up since, gosh, 05. Um, God, isn't that crazy? I know. 16 I know. years of my, but anyhow. Um, so say like in, uh, in 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, trying to think, I, I bet you that I was getting – 10 to 15 a day, 20 a day, you know, yeah. somewhere in there uh, of, of, of new distressed properties right. hitting the market. And it's hard for me to even say how many I'm getting now because I get so few. Like, I mean, it's like one a week. Like, yeah. you know, here and there. And, then, and keep in mind, there's some certain parameters. Like, I don't buy, I don't, I don't want to buy anything that's under 800 square feet. I've got, yeah. you know, a Or bathroom, junk, bad areas. You know, bad areas. Yeah. But... 
you know, it's like I get like one a week. Um, you know, and a lot of times the one that I get to get get for the week is, I mean, it it needs to be bulldozed in most right. in most cases. But well, let's put it this way: here's another way to understand what's happening in the market and what the people who do this for a living and are highly paid to understand it are doing, which is the hedge funds. What the hedge funds are now doing is going out and buying mom and pop houses, meaning if you list your house for sale, just like you expect a normal person to come along and offer on it, they're offering above full price on a lot of houses if it fits their parameters. So they're literally just overspending and because they know that they're not going to be able to fill these orders. They have all this money, these hedge funds sitting on the sidelines that, you know, was getting invested, you know, month after month since 2008 into rental properties and uh, homes out there. And that's been cut off for a year and it's not going to be turned back on. I mean, the supply of foreclosures has been turned off. So they adapted and they're now, as you know, they've been doing this for a while. They adapted quickly and they just started buying people's houses. You know, they went from being at the sheriff sales and the tax foreclosure sales and offering on every real REO, every HUD home, and they've totally changed their model to adapt and they're just buying a house. You're competing with Joe next door. And that's why you see like on TikTok, people complaining about not being able to buy houses because of these hedge funds and these real estate investors. Because the hedge funds and real estate vest investors have entered into the normal housing market for the first time in history it's crazy first time in history mm -hmm. and and there's a whole generation of millennials when you say normal i think it's it's important that people know what you mean by normal yeah. in main meaning owner occupant housing Correct. that just joe schmo and his family live in and right. they're, they're coming in from an investment standpoint and buying them yeah i mean if you if you had said five years ago that these hedge funds are going to start offering on those kinds of houses i would have told you you are mentally ill and insane and you needed to needed to seek a doctor right and now they're just out there buying you know if your grandma lists her house they'll get an offer from you know a nice couple that just moved to town and they'll get an offer from a hedge fund of cash for more mm -hmm. and which meaning the buyers can't compete they can't because you know the hedge funds are giving offers above retail price all cash 10 day close. Correct. And then, so if, if you're a, a, what most, you know, buyers are looking for is uh, an inspection period, you know, uh, time to obtain financing and a 30 to 45 day close. So when you're, you know, seeing, you know, all this offer that everything could, that anything could go wrong with it, the financing, the inspection, you know, appraisal, all this other stuff, when hedge funds are offering cash, no inspection, no appraisal, immediate close. Buyers can't compete. They can't. Right. You know, and so we've got a whole generation of first time home buyers that's missing out on owning real estate, which is why you and I preach to them that they should buy rental properties. That's the best way to fight back right now. It's to, to own cash flowing real estate themselves and, uh, and, and enter the housing market um, more opportunistically. You know, if you're going to delay entering the housing market because you can't compete with hedge funds, at least fight back and buy yourself some darn rentals. You know, you can still do that. Um, but it's a very unique time, you know, and, and we're going to see a shakeup, I think, in the industry on investors. Anytime things are this extreme, you see kind of uh, the wheat separated from the chaff, as they say. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a unique time where, you know, true acquisitions experts are the most valuable thing that you can find. In fact, you and I are speaking coming up. Um, we speak a lot at different things. And, and this one is a friend of mine from high school who's got a local real estate investment club. So it's kind of different and fun. So I said, what, you know, what topic do you want? Because normally you and I have a topic that we'll, we'll cover in advance and we'll, we'll decide what we're going to do. Well, why let them? I just asked. I said, well, we'll talk about anything you want. And they said acquisitions, you know, and it's, understandable why they would pick that topic. It's the most difficult part of being a real estate investor right now. Um, unless you're just a passive real estate investor that uses a group like us who does all that for you. Um, it's a difficult time. The first part of our 
conversation with them, I want to ask your friend from high school about you in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I know yeah. you were kind of the hometown hero. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, just, uh, I was an idiot. <laughs> it's to get some of the stories, but, but no, it is, I mean, it is interesting to, 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 to hear, uh, it's a, it's a major, you know, franchise real estate brokerage. And I, I'm honored to go. Sure. It'll be fun. You know, um, but you know, it's wants to hear about how the heck we're competing, right. you know, um, we normally talk to groups of like thousands of people in the room. And so th- to me, this one's, I don't know. I mean, how many ages? Is I don't know, but it'll be fun. It's, it's a small local group. And how fun is that? Yeah. You know, but I'm going to bring a cooler bush light in there with yeah. me. Whenever we go. We should. You know. That wouldn't surprise them. <laughs> they knew me in high school. So that would be par for the course. <laughs> that would have been par for the course. So there's a, there, you're going to have to focus on a lot of different ways to acquire properties, you know, Tax sales have also been kind of uh, hiccuped in there. Luckily, I shouldn't say luckily. There's statutes that kind of keep that where it's a, you know, the, the, it is what it is still. However, those will be shrinking a little bit too because when incomes are up and properties are valuable, people are paying their taxes. So even those will, will be significantly Well, smaller. and that's, a, that's an entirely, you know, different topic. You know, the right of redemption period, you right. know, scares away a lot of investors. And that's, you know... Basically, you know, for stuff like that, it just takes a, a, a lot, a lot longer. It's a very but, complex mm-hmm. way to purchase houses, full of uh, potholes that you can step in and lose a leg. It's it's a dangerous yep. way to to do it if you're not an expert and you don't have a you know an attorney that can help advise you. We don't suggest it for the weak of heart. So. Right. So let me let me span off of a couple things that you you've said. You have said that the house values are keeping the number of foreclosures, you know, minimized because why foreclose when you can just sell the house and bank gets paid off and really the person's behind, you know, makes a, makes a little bit money, a little bit of money. And you've also, you know, talked about that judges are a little bit more lenient. And I think that a lot of our listeners, because we have so many of our clients from California and they talk about, how Indiana is such a landlord friendly state, mm-hmm. whereas California is not. And they, 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 they've, I've heard these horror stories about, you know, getting non-paying tenants out and it like literally blows my mind what people in California have to go through to be able to do that. But we have seen a time now where, you know, you can't evict, mm-hmm. you know, are, is there a changing of the guard? You know, is, is Indiana, going to start becoming more and more tenant friendly? I mean, it seems like that's kind of the way of the world period. Like, you know, everyone's protected. It doesn't work, you know, um, trying to nerf the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, we, I don't know if this is, um, you know, all of these rules were put in place because of COVID. You know, because ultimately it affects foreclosure is what I'm talking about. Eventually, yeah, it'll trickle Mm -hmm. down. Um, I don't know. You know, these were all put in place to COVID. Do we go right back to where we were? Um, you know, there's always going to be a place for, I was explaining to my kids the differences in, and why the founding fathers put together states versus, you know, a country. And it's because states, they want some independence and in being able to have different core beliefs and, and ways of, mm-hmm. of operating. And, and Indiana has historically been a very business friendly uh, real estate owner, investor state. And, I think that will continue to be, but what does that look like is the question. I think we will always be on the, out of all 50 states, we'll be one of the best for landlords. I don't know what that looks like, though. Mm -hmm. I know that we will probably always be better for a landlord than California or a lot of other states, Indiana will. But what, how soft do we go on that? I don't know. I don't know. It's such a, it's such a hard, it's such a hard topic because, and I say this because I, I believe that we do. I think that you and I both have very big hearts. Yeah. You know, I think that, uh, you know, we've, we've gotten behind, you know, some, some charities and, you know, we, giving is, is a big part of what we do. And it really helping people out, even through situations is, is something that we do a lot. But at the same time, you know, seeing tenants being able to stay in properties and basically just say, there's nothing you can do to me. I'm just going to stay here and not pay my rent. I mean, it's really hard because, you know, when you, and really it hasn't happened a lot across the many properties that we manage, but there has been a few cases where that's happened. And, you know, you're like, so the landlord, 
you know, has to continue to pay for everything, whether they've got, you right. know, carrying costs, you know, from a mortgage, you know, they, they still have to cover the Taxes deferred, and deferred maintenance, you know, all that stuff. If the sink is leaking, yeah. you know, it's just. Owning real estate's expensive. You know, it just doesn't seem right, but. No, but you know, that's, that's kind of the thing. It's, it's, we, we really believe in taking care of our clients and, and we have a fiduciary duty to take care of the landlords. So we, we care about the tenants and the situations they're in. But at the end of the day, um, the idea that all of our, our clients and owners are these mega rich people just sitting on the beach fanning themselves with $100 bills is false. It's not true. There's a lot of normal, mostly normal individual owners who this is their means to finally mm -hmm. grow and become rich and wealthy. They're not rich and wealthy now. They're using real estate to become that way. And mm -hmm. so to treat them as if they're already arrived at the end, if they're these greedy rich people, it's, it's, it's a falsity. Not, dude, it's not true. It's not it's true. Not right. and, and so, you know, it's, it's a lot of the education out there. In fact, I would argue oftentimes our tenants are better, have, are in better financial situations than some of our owners. I would argue that that's cases is, is not well, when you, when you, when you're, when you're new to real estate and you're, you're, you're jumping in, you're making that financial commitment to get it's in. tight. Yeah, it's tight. You know, and you know, I've got a, one of our customers is a good friend of mine that um, he sent both of his kids to, to, he lives in California, but sent both of his kids to Indiana oh, university right. business school, you right. know, and I've been to IU games with him mm -hmm. and you know, he's, he's one of the guys that's got one of those tenants in there to say, eh, you can't do nothing to me. I'm just not yeah. going to pay. Right. I'm like, man, that's just, you know, I want to take care of him. You know, right. like, yeah, I care about him. And it's yeah. just like, He's not sitting on piles of cash out there in California going, ha, 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 these are all my rentals. Right. No, he's he's working hard every day, saving to put rentals in place so he could pay for his kid's school. Like, he's not, it, it, that's, it's just a falsity that, that needs to be dispelled. And so, you know, one of the things I am proud of that you touched on is, is our attitude towards tenants. In situations like that, we try to educate them. Not that that always does much, but we try to inform them on the real case of the situation. And we try to find solutions. But, you know, the, the properties that we focus on, there's not a lot of people that are trying to take advantage of it. These are professionals. I mean, we're talking about very few yeah. cases. I mean, these very are, few. Like I said, many of our tenants are probably in better financial positions than some of our, our owners. So, you know, we're focused on high-end rentals for our market, which is, it makes life right. easy there. You know, but you know, and, and keep in mind, I believe that there's one other aspect of this that could be a real benefit to investors, which is there's a lot of people that aren't going to be able to enter the housing market who make great money, who have a lot of money saved that are going to need to rent homes for a while. You know, they're not going to be able to compete um, with the hedge funds and they're not going to want to because they're smart. They're not going to want to overpay. So they're going to wait. Um, and so the tenant pool out there, we think is going to continue to to be a significantly great pool of people for the types of properties that uh, we suggest you focus on. You know, that's across the nation, not just in right. Indianapolis. So, you know, even if there's a pullback in the economy, which you and I are both big pessimists on, we both um, have, have our doubts about the strengths in the, of the economy. And, and I've started to get some inflation concerns. Um, I, I still don't have many worries about the actual real estate sector in itself you know, for, for a while, there's just so much pent up demand and there's not enough supply, you know, now, now you, there's not going to be foreclosures to, to drive down a market. So there's like all the factors that are needed to pop a bubble aren't there point. anymore. They're it's just point. not there, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, do I think that this stuff is appreciating too much and it needs to be corrected? Yes. But I don't see any tools in the market that are on our, on their way to fix it. I think this is going to be, here to stay for a short period at the very least. Unless there's some unforeseen, of you know, event in our world or in right. our economy that, you know, that, that, that could fall, which we're always at risk of. So we've kind of talked about there's not going to be a lot of foreclosures. The foreclosures that we've been used to over, you know, our 40 plus years combined in real estate. Um, but, you know, we're still, we're still out there plugging away. You know, even though we don't have a lot of those means. So what, what, let's get back into what do you do next? Like what, what is the ways to, to fight against there not being many distress like bank owned foreclosures hitting the market? Well, for a lot of the, the people that are watching us are, are 
passive investors. And so for them, there's not a lot of change. They just need to be ready to pull the trigger when they've, you know, most of them will be working with a group like us. They just need to be ready to pull the trigger quickly when a good property is put in front of them from a group like us. Because the groups like us are out there hustling and we'll always find properties. We have ways. Um, for the the kind of people that are out there looking to invest on their own and try to dive into this market and you know, or find a realtor to help you buy and then you're going to fix it up. It's going to be a difficult time for a while for you to be able to enter the market. You know, I think, I think patience now is more important than uh, filling, filling your need to own rentals. If there was ever a time to sit back and kind of watch the market um, for those kind of active investors, it would be now you can look at some other stuff that would, I think would work for them. <coughs> Excuse me. We talked about uh, duplexes, you know, you can look at all kinds of other opportunities but I would be patient. And, uh, and then for the more passive investors, I would be ready to act quick. It's almost opposites. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a time where you, you, you can't say, well, let me, uh, let, let me think about it. You know, right. it's, it's like that is really everything outside of the real estate you know, world too. You know, we're, we've been talking about buying cars now for months, uh, many months, because, um, you know, our company vehicles are starting to get up there in mileage. Right. And, um, we had to buy our leases out because there were our car leases out for the company vehicles because there was no vehicles. That was a while ago now. Yeah, it's been, it's been at least <coughs> like right at two years, I think. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's a strange time. It, it really is. And it's the same thing in real estate. I mean, it's, it's, oh, they're out of iPhones, by the way. No iPhones. Yeah, either. Ivy's screen broke. My youngest screen broke, and and oh, well, her world's coming to an end. Then she's isn't it? she's amazing. My kids are so balanced. It's just my kids are like, like it's if, stressed if, her if, out. If, yeah, because like I mean, it's stressed a, her out. But like, like with my niece and nephews, like you know, like watching them with their phones, like it's the it's like their lifeblood. They're that way a little bit too, but my kids have more balance yeah. than most. I'm just always amazed by my kids. We took them to, to Kings Island a couple of years ago, you know, and I, I'm the, I'm the dad, you know, the dad, you know, with, right. with, Put with, with, not, 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 well, not well, like, a, oh. I, it was, I didn't have a fanny pack, but I might as well have, but I had a big backpack that I was carrying around everyone's well. I have to carry around a lot of sunblock for me, you know, whenever we go somewhere. But, you know, the, when we get on these roller coasters, they'd always want me to put their phones in their, in the backpack. Mm -hmm. And it would be like literally as soon as like we're on the landing, I'll oh, get to getting off. Go, give, give me my phone. Yeah. Give me my phone. Yeah. So like in the third roller coaster, I'm like, look, you give it to me. I'll give it back to you in like a, a couple of hours. Right. Otherwise, you're taking it on the roller coaster. Yeah. And let me guess, they all chose to take them on the roller mm -hmm. coasters. Yeah. I was kind of hoping yeah. one of them would, uh, one of them would, would lose it. And I could give like a, a teaching moment, but you know, I'm a, it's tough. I'm a sick bastard though. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. Uh, that's why I like still camping and going on those canoe trips seven days without a phone or anything. I think it's beautiful, but it's a wild world out there, you know, and the, the whole foreclosure thing, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird thing to, to, to think about. Like when I said, whenever you explained it, you know, to, to our staff and, you know, it taught me something too. It's like, wow. I mean, it's, it's true. We're going to be in this for, for a while, you have, we almost have to see the market go the other way until, you know, it starts to replenish an inventory from an investor standpoint to be able to get it. Right. To be clear, it doesn't matter what the economy does because there's a lag in the foreclosure, much less in a state like ours that's a judicial state. Mm -hmm. You've got a six-month process to foreclose at the very least. That's in the best of scenarios. So even if the economy goes backwards and there's a, a bit of a pullback in the real estate market, it, it's, you're not going to, there still won't be foreclosures for another year. So best case you've got, I, I shouldn't say best case, worst case, if the economy goes to, goes to the toilet, you still won't have foreclosures for a year from now. You know, right. after that you would, but the economy's not going, doesn't look like it's the real estate market's not going to do that anytime soon. It doesn't look like, so, no. I mean, it's, it's the foreseeable future, a total lack of forecl foreclosures. You know, for you, it, for those individual investors out there that like to do this on their own, just be prepared um, to, to sit back. It's okay. It's okay to be patient. You know, Clint and I have done this a long time. We've had years where we've kind of pulled back ourselves on adding to our personal portfolios. If you're an individual no investor, we really suggest it's okay to just ride this area out until there's deals that become available again. If you're a passive investor, 
we believe now is just as good, if not the best time to continue to add to your portfolio, fight back against these hedge funds, own real estate, build wealth. You know, you can still do all of that passively through people like us, you know, hammer at home there, you know, act quickly. You know, it's, it's almost opposites, um, you know, with those two little scenarios you have there. But those are the two uh, directions we suggest you go right now based on what we're seeing and what we see in the near future. Dude, that was really well said. <laughs> I think that that's like an Emmy type moment that you just had there. <laughs> that's true. It is true, but it was very well said yeah. and something that Scott is extremely well versed in. And I totally will toot his own, you know, toot his horn on this. Like uh, if you have any questions, you know, about supply of foreclosures and that, I know Scott would be happy to field uh, your questions. Speaking of supply, we got a big supply of dart. Uh, guns and bullets. We probably better get to that. Yeah. I'm going like, to light you up, man. <laughs> but uh, but t- until we do that, Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, subscribe, continue to join us. Till next time, happy investing.